Right. Uh, zoom in, zoom out. Everything all right? Ready to go? So what do you want? So what do you want to know? Be quiet, please. If you had the option to, would you move back with everything the way it used to be? No, we wouldn't. No, why? Why would we? Uh, well, it's a bit out of the way. Uh, when we left, yeah. when I went there originally in 1965, yeah. um, the whole building was full of people. Okay. We had um, a dental technician making false teeth. Mm -hmm. We had money lenders. We had. Um, the chap upstairs repairing guns, we had all sorts of things, but gradually, okay. over a period of time, till we left in 1976, uh, we were the last ones in the building. Okay. So of course, it started to get a bit creepy and it got a bit dangerous, because people were coming in and stealing things and okay. locking themselves in the evening and so on. You know. So we were glad to get out. But I mean, from the point of view of economics, it was would have made more economic sense to stay there, because it was very cheap. I mean, the rates were very cheap, and the rent was very cheap, and so on and so on. So there's a development for you to move on? Uh, yes, it was, yeah, and they, they were supposed to be, um, well, they wanted us out, actually, the owners of the building, because they wanted to do something to it, um, you know, turn it into flats or something like that, yeah. which, no, no, which yeah, hasn't got, doesn't happen, no. So. You haven't got the many no, of them, no. so. Right, how do you feel about Gloucester Chambers being a dysfunctional, uh, sorry, how do you feel about Gl Gloucester Chambers currently being a dysfunctional and derelict space? Well, I think it's a shame, really, because it's, uh, it's in right in the centre of town, um, I mean, Going back years ago, all these buildings, uh, all these uh, offices and things were used either as offices or they were used as premises yeah. uh, for people like consultants. I mean, I can remember when there were all sorts of people, there were, were um, medical consultants above these shops, and in fact, most of them had a caretaker yeah. to keep an eye on, on the place. Now, everything's just been wrecked. I mean, that's what it is. I don't, you know, I'm not very happy with it. If you go abroad, for example, go to Belgium, Holland, People are living above shops, and I mean that's a good idea because you're yeah. combining two functions: uh, is, yeah. one with the, um, the the business function, also you know, you're, you're um, employing, um, you know, um, not, not employing, but you're creating places where people are there. Yeah, and is so what with the popularity going? That means that creating more houses as well. Like you could make use of what we've already yeah, got. Yeah, exactly. That's right. And saving our yeah. forest land. That's right. Yeah, exactly. That's right. Yeah. The um, yeah, yeah. greenfield sites as well. What businesses do you remember? Okay. Um, what businesses do you remember most that were within the Gloucester Chambers? Uh, well, <laughs> You've already answered that. Yeah, well, well, I mainly answered I've forgotten, forgotten one, actually. The one was Highbury, uh, the Highbury, Highbury School of Mount. Highway, 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 um, yes, uh, the Highway School of Mobley, they were there when, when I got there first. They'd been there, uh, they predated me actually. Yeah. So they were there before I got there. Okay. So, um, yeah, that's the main one. But I say there was a money lender up the other end as well, which did quite good business. Yeah. Um, yeah. Fusion. Rediffusion offices upstairs, they used to do the televisions and the higher up radios and things. But, um, you know, the Highway was the one that was closest to us, yeah. We had most to do with. Do you remember uh, Mrs. Morgan that used to live in a flat upstairs? No, her name wasn't Morgan, it was um, Hennessy. Mrs. Hennessy. Hennessy. It wasn't Morgan, it was Hennessy, Mrs. Hennessy. She lived upstairs on her own. Yeah. And very often if she heard uh, someone, she'd come out and, uh, her, you know, she, I, I used to say to her, you were nervous living on your own. She was a wom woman well into her fifties by that time. And she said, no, well, she said, I used to look under the bed and open there would be a man under there in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah. But she used to come and she said, she said, if I took my false teeth out, she said, I'd frighten any burglar anyway. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you don't put me down as a bloody character on this, mind you, because no. I object to that. What, um, I mean, he is, you want to interview him after. Yeah, I can help. What, what is your strongest memory across the chambers? Across the chambers? Um, I don't know, really. Can't think of anything. You know, uh, the money you <laughs> well, I suppose it was uh, uh, initially, yeah, initially working for myself, and uh, which I was going to do. That was, that was it. Was, yeah, it was a stop. Yeah, yes, I suppose that was it. Really, I mean, it was the first time that I ever worked for myself at 28 years of age. Yeah. So I thought was, uh, my mother was thought I was stupid because I'd given up a job. Well, it wasn't a well-paid job. It was a job, and I had a ch baby on the way and all that. So I suppose my mother thought I was stupid at 28, <laughs> setting out on my own. But then again, it's uh, you know, it, it proved. Be all successful, so there we are. So that was it. Thank you very much. Is that the lot? So you're going to get John Payne now, are you? Yeah. Thank oh, you well. very much. All the best. Thank you. Good luck.